नमस्कार योगी अशोक राज फ्रॉम एडमिंटन कैनेडा आई लाइक टू इंट्रोड्यूस माई सेल्फ राइट नाउ आई एम डूइंग पी एच डी ऑन योगा फ्रॉम इंडिया एंड आई हैव बीन वर्क एज ए असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर इन गवर्नमेंट कॉलेज चंडीगढ़ आई हैव बीन टू मैनी कंट्री for yoga seminars and workshops like london uk uh europe dublin dubai doha and i work as a yoga teacher in china also now i'm working here in canada edmonton uh when i was back in india my yoga episodes were on national television dd punjabi and dd national they were telecast to 180 countries worldwide uh i'm doctor in naturopathy also some of my students they are from bollywood mumbai some movie actor actresses tv actor actresses they are still my student and they are taking online classes from me here also in edmonton uh one of my yoga episodes is going to be telecast on punjabi national television edmonton um glad to meet you all and uh, today our first topic is the concept and practice of pranayama especially bhastrika surya bhedi and shitli uh before i start explaining techniques of uh, all these pranayamas we have to understand that what is pranayama pranayama is made of with two words prana plus yama okay pran and aya pran means the pran vayu which we inhale and which we exhale okay it's oxygen and there are you know five kind of uh, prana vayu is in our body but mainly refers to oxygen okay prana means prana vayu ayam means inhale and exhale of that prana vayu that is pranayama okay uh in yogic uh, practices i personally believe that all the yoga postures they have only 20% impact and effect on your life physical mental and social but pranayama has 80% effect on your life when you inhale pranavayu it directly affect your cells it improves the health of your red blood cells white blood cells and especially helps in regeneration of healthy cells all you uh, all know that uh, the blood cells in our body the cells in our body they keep taking birth they keep dying the degeneration means dying of a cell regeneration means taking birth of a new body cell okay and uh, for your information i would like to tell you that cell is the smallest unit in our body cells made tissues tissues made organs organs made systems systems many systems when it comes together it makes our physical structure human way okay so the seed of this human being this physical structure is your small tiny cell the birth the health of a cell depends on two things number 1 what is the oxygen level in your body maximum life 
of a cell is around 60 to 90 days. Okay. <clears throat> then they die. While taking, when a new birth cell is taking, the health of that newborn cell is depend on the oxygen level. If your oxygen level is good, your body cell will be healthy. A healthy red blood cells will carry more blood. You will be active. A healthy white blood cells will fight with the disease more efficiently. That will keep you away from all the disease. This is the importance of oxygen. The second point is your mental state. If you are happy, if you are joyful, if you are, if you are feeling blessed, and of, of course, the oxygen level is also good, then these two expect uh, uh, help to get more and more healthy blood cells. Okay. We'll discuss the type of pranayams. There are different type of pranayam. Of course, we'll be discussing today only Bhastrika, Surya Bedi, and Sitli, but there are many more pranayams. Uh, uh, like Bhastrika, Kapalbhati, Anulom Vilom, Ramri, Sitli, Sheetkari, uh, Agnisar. Some people say that Agnisar is not a pranayam and is a kriya, but it's come in the category of pranayam also. Okay, so there are certain things which you need to know while starting pranayama. In Hatha Yoga, Ashtanga Yoga, there are eight limbs of Ashtanga Yoga. The first one is Yama, Niyam, Asan, Pranayam, Pratyahar, Dharna, Dhyan, Samadhi. Okay, if you'll, sorry, if you'll look carefully, that pranayama comes after asanas. Yam, Niyam, Asana, and Pranayama. Why pranayama after asanas? It means that you should do pranayama after some asanas or after some warm-up. Uh, many of you have noticed, those who have tried pranayama, that sitting in pranayama position and doing pranayama for a long time may cause you back pain. There are two reasons of this back pain. First thing, you starting pranayama without any work. Second thing, you don't know how to sit while doing pranayama. Like I'm sitting on a yoga block. By using a yoga block, your back is straight automatically. You can sit for long. If you don't have a yoga block, you can just use a small pillow cushion to support your back. Okay. This is very, very important. Before doing any pranayam, you should warm up five to 10 minutes, any, any kind of activity. It may be a standing walk, maybe some jumping, maybe some running, maybe Surya Namaskar, anything. Some asanas, five to 10 minutes, get your body warmed up. Then start doing pranayam by taking a yoga block or a pillow beneath your hips. This is very important. <clears throat> this is sitting position for pranayama, okay? So we'll start the first pranayama, bhastrika. Bhastrika is also called as blows uh, breathing in English. Bhastrika, for bhastrika, sitting position should be anyone. You can sit in this uh, chokri, you can sit in this uh, siddhasana or you can sit in the 
lotus pose. Okay, whatever is comfortable with you, but main thing that you should have something to sit on. And before starting a bhastrika, this position is very comfortable. Make sure that your back is straight, your chin is little down, so that your cervical spine is also straight. And this finger, the first finger in our body, represents air. And breathing uh, techniques or the pranayamas, they all are related to air. So we'll have a Vayu Mudra. By pressing this first finger, by pressing from your thumb. Keep it straight. Don't, don't tight your wrist, don't tight your shoulder. Just keep it straight on your knees. And again, check your position. Your back should be straight. Chin will be little down. In Bhastrika, Bhastrika is very simple. A long breath in, little hold, and long breath out. How? I'll demonstrate. Okay, we will divine, we'll define this bhastrika into three parts, inhale, hold, and exhale. Let's talk about inhale first. Your inhale should be slightly powerful inhale, not just simple inhale, not like this, little with force. Why? When you put little power, little force while inhaling, you, the air goes into your lungs with the force and hit the inactive alveolus. That makes, after some long time, after some time long, if you keep, keep it doing for long, these inactive cells start getting active by this hit. Hold. Holding capacity may be very person to person. I would suggest that you should hold at least three to four seconds inside. Why this three to four seconds? By holding your breath three to four seconds, you are giving time to your alveolize or what you call uh, air bags, air sacs, to consume all the oxygen in that breath. You must be knowing that in one breath, there is not only oxygen, there are other gases and there are dust also. There is approximately 21 to 20% oxygen is there in one breath. So that 20% oxygen is consumed fully by holding your breath three to four seconds. Your exhale, your exhale should be longer than your inhale. Why? Because delaying your exhale means you are still giving some time to oxygen to get consumed and carbon dioxide to come out. Okay, so inhale, little forcefully, exhale, uh, sorry, hold, three to four seconds. Slowly, you'll, you'll, uh, your capacity, your vital capacity will develop and you can hold it for more time. But initially, three to four seconds is good. But if you are very beginner, 
and if you have some breathing problem don't hold just a long breathe and long breathe out will be enough and you will see that slowly your vital capacity your lungs capacity is developing and you are able to hold more for more time okay so i'll tell you that one thing again i'll demonstrate the bhastrika again i'll suggest this vayu mudra is not suggested you can do without vayu mudra also but i suggest to do it with vayu mudra for more effective results just rest your hands on your knees check your back check your spine this is the ideal bhastrika techniques but if some some person they have lungs problem they have asthma their lungs is not very strong and especially those who smoke okay they will not be they they'll get tired while holding this much so they sh can do it little faster without holding how but again in this also your exhale will be longer than your inhale okay we'll come to the benefit now the benefit of bhastrika bhastrika has lot many benefits it's increase the number one it's increase your oxygen level in the body and i told you what oxygen level is helping with more many thing number two it help to remove anxiety when you have a uh, ample amount of oxygen in your body that relaxes your mind relaxes your body so it helps in removing anxiety number 3 it helps in removing depression number 4 it helps your muscles to relax especially uh, in the, some disorders like uh, my, uh, fibromyalgia fibromyalgia is a disorder where your all muscles are tight your joints are paining every body parts they feel pain so when you do bhastrika your oxygen level increases your mind is at rest your body is at rest that help your neuromuscular system goes on rest slow and that makes your muscles little relax so the ultimate benefit of bhastrika is that instantly it improves your oxygen level in your body and this oxygen level is how important we all know after this corona period or still going on that oxygen was so valued in this period that we all know that we spoke how important is oxygen so this bhastrika instantly increase your oxygen level okay we uh, which precautions uh, for bhastrika we don't have any precautions every person can do it but uh, in case of uh, pregnant women uh, in case of any uh, c section in case of uh, uh, severe disc problems you should do it very very slowly you can do it but very very slowly okay now we'll talk to talk about surya uh, surya bedi pranayam 
uh, <clears throat> in uh, these nostrils, the right nostril is called Surya Nadi. The left nostril is called Chandra Nadi. So we have Surya Bhedi Pranayama also. We have Chandra Bhedi Pranayama also. Okay. So in Surya Bhedi Pranayams, we inhale by right nostrils and simultaneously by closing your left nostrils and exhale from left. Inhale from right, exhale from left. Inhale from right, exhale from right. This right nostrils, as I told you, known as Surya Nadi. Surya Nadi is hot by nature. Chandra Nadi is cold in nature. So Surya Bhedi Pranayam is good for those who have low blood pressure problem. Let's talk about the technique of uh, Surya Bhedi uh, Pranayam. These two fingers, fold them. Last two fingers and your thumb. Okay, we'll using by, we'll use them to close left or right nostrils. So initially, as I told you, that Surya Bhedi Pranayam is taking breath from right, taking out from left. So you use, you can use any hand, right or left, but same technique, last two fingers and thumb. First, we'll close left nostrils. Again, Vayu Mudra, as I told you before, breathe in from your right nostrils. Hold it. Breathe out from left nostrils. Again, breathe in from right. Okay. All in Surya Pedi, always you breathe in from your right nostrils and breathe out from your left nostrils. As I told you, this is a very, very good for the person who's uh, having low blood pressure problem. And in Chandra Bhedi, it's different, it's just opposite. You breathe in from left side, breathe out from right side. This is Chandra Bedi Pranayam. Chandra Bedi is very effective for high BP because left nostrils is cold. When you breathe in from cold, that will give a coolness to your mind, to your body. Uh, opposite of this, Surya Bedi. It's right nostrils is hot, that will keep you warm. So Surya Bhedi is very good for low BP. Chandra Bhedi is very good for high BP. So this was the technique of uh, Surya Bhedi. Uh, cautions, uh, if we talk about precautions of uh, while doing Surya Bhedi, again, your back should be straight. And uh, of course, if you are having uh, high BP, you should not do Surya Bhedi Pranayam. This is the only precautions. Rest, all of you can do it slowly. Again, while doing Surya Bhedi Pranayam, your exhale will be longer than your inhale. And there is not too much hold. One or two second hold is enough in Surya Bhedi. Okay? And if you are in middle of uh, your low BP position or situation, then forget about hold. Simply 
Breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out fast. In low BP situation, how? Just watch. This will instantly raise your blood pressure and you will be normal. Same, otherwise, in high BP, Chandra Vedi Pranayam, inhale and exhale very fast. See? This Chandra Vedi Pranayam will give you instant help. Instant help in high BP. Because I, uh, there was only Surya Vedi in our topic today. But uh, in my point of view, if we are talking about low BP, then we should talk about high BP. So Surya Vedi and Chandra Vedi, they are opposite. One very important thing in Surya Vedi, and Bhastrika and for all the pranayams. When you inhale, you inhale and fill air in your tummy, not on your chest. You see that sometimes we breathe in, our chest is coming up. We are filling air here. Our fulcrum is here. We should move our fulcrum. So when we breathe in, our tummy should come out. When we breathe out, our tummy should go in. Okay? Stomach full of breath. Breathe in. Your tummy will come out. Breathe out. Your tummy will go. This is a principle you can use in any pranaya. Okay, we'll talk about now Sitli Pranaya. Uh, Sitli, uh, the Sit word is taken from uh, Sanskrit. Sit means cold. Okay, uh, Sitli Pranayam is basically used in hot temperature areas or when you are body temperature becomes very hot. So Sitli Pranayam gives you instant coolness, restless uh, rest uh, to your nervous system, to your muscles, because it's cold by nature. The technique of doing Sitli Pranayam is you supposed to roll your tongue outwards like this your sides will go up and you'll rolling your tongue again i like to show you all the breathing pattern in shitli is totally different in all other pranayams you breathe in from your nostrils and you breathe out from nostrils or mouth, it doesn't matter. But in Sheetli Pranayam, you breathe in from your mouth and breathe out from your nose. It's opposite. I'll, I'll like to give you one example. Uh, you must have seen any dog or cat in summer when they are very under very hot temperature and they are their blood pressure is very high. So what they do? They take out their tongue and breathe from mouth. <sighs> right? So in direct way, knowing or buying unknowingly, they are cooling their body temperature but by taking breath from your mouth. Because 
in your mouth, there is a saliva, it's coolness. When you will inhale from your mouth, that saliva and that moisture will make your breath cool. The, when this breath will go inside, this breath will make your whole body cool. This is the concept of Sheetli Pranayama. Okay, I'll show you how to do it. Again, you can have uh, Vayu Mudra, back straight again. Prepare your tongue. This is so effective. If we'll do it for three to five minutes, immediately you'll start feeling a coolness in your body. Benefit of Shitli Pranams are, as I told you already, it's very, very good for high BP or high body temperature in fever. When your body temperature goes 102, 103, Sheetli Pranam is very effective in that. Okay, all you guys can do it, but people with low blood pressure should avoid Sheetli Pranam. Uh, precautions, as, as I told you, that uh, people with low BP should avoid Sheetli Pranam. People with uh, those who are living in cold areas should avoid Sheetli Pranayam because it's already cold everywhere. And, uh, but it's very, very effective for hot body temperature, high BP in hot areas. Okay. <sighs> Regarding this, if you guys have any question, you can contact me on uh, Instagram or Facebook. My Instagram ID is Yogi Ashokraj, same as on Facebook, Yogi Ashokraj. You can send me a message. You can uh, call me on Messenger. I will definitely reply and try to solve your all queries. Namaste.